evening. Here we are, about to start my fourth attempt at wild camping. Perhaps I should actually record some intros that say, oh my God, this was a terrible experience. Oh my God, this was a fabulous experience. This one was a bit noisy. This one was beautiful. So anyway, yes, my fourth attempt at wild camping. This time, I'm heading to a pair of woods called Denge and Edrig Woods, which are on the outskirts of Chillum, which is a ex-market town in the Stour Valley on the North Downs. So this is St. Mary's Church in Chillum. Apparently it's a seventh century church. It was mentioned in the Doomsday Book. The current building though, you can see there, only dates from the 15th century. So it's pretty new. Apparently, the first Archbishop of Canterbury, St. Augustine, who was sent over here by the Romans to spread Christianity through England, is actually buried here. And it's also reported, possibly, allegedly, that Thomas a Becket is also buried here. And he was another Archbishop of Canterbury. And he was apparently buried here after he was murdered by the King's men. over to my right is called Judy Berry's Grave. It dates from around 2000 BC and I guess somebody called Judy Berry is buried there. But it's an ancient long barrow. Apparently it's 44 meters long and having walked down it I can confirm that. For nearly 4,000, more than 4,000 years, I can confirm it is 44 meters long. They dated it when they found a axe head inside the mound, in the centre of the mound. And they dated it to 2000 BC. It's quite old. After my previous exploit, when I went to the haunted castle at Thurnham, I was quite tempted this time to head to Pluckley, which apparently is in the Guinness Book of Records as the most haunted village in the United Kingdom. And there's a little wood on the outskirts, which is quaintly named Screaming Wood, where apparently there have been a number of massacres and the woods are renowned for people finding ghosts, creepy goings on and strange noises. Funnily enough, I decided to give that a miss. So last week in September, it's absolutely glorious. The whole week has been fabulous. 24 degrees coming down here and tonight should be clear and should only drop to 14 or 15 degrees so I definitely shan't be getting cold tonight as it was going to be warmer tonight I decided to pack my lightweight sleeping bag and I thought that, that was going to lighten my rucksack always seems though I managed to get to 16.2 kilos so that's the weight of it again today Appears to be forever upwards and my goodness it's warm today. Well, having just checked the map looks like I made a bit of a rookie error. I've got two mapping apps Viewranger and OS Maps. One is set to miles, one is set to kilometers. So my seven kilometer walk actually turns out it's going to be seven miles. So I may have to review my end point for this walk make it a little bit shorter. Okay, after a little bit of ambling around, I think I've decided on this little spot here. It's on the top of a hill. If there's any sunrise tomorrow morning, I should see a sunrise over behind me there. And this evening, I should see the sunset over in that direction. It's quite an open spot though. But I appear to be well away from anybody and anything. It doesn't look like these piles are used very much either, so hopefully I shan't be disturbed. There's now about 45 minutes to sunset, so I'm going to start setting things up. Okay, 7 o'clock, the sun's gone down now. 
and last time I was out I managed to lose the wind baffle off of my GoPro so it's a little bit windy up here on the top of a hill so it could be a little bit breezy this evening up here so hopefully you can still hear me and it isn't just sound of wind got my dinner on a fireball chilli it's got 15 minutes to go so it's going to be ready about 10 past 7 I guess I better get my sleep system set up. Just sitting here now watching the sun go down while my chili's cooking. Cracked open the beer. The toast the sunset. That's good. There's obviously a less vigorous walk up here this week. So my beer was definitely not excited by the time I got here carefully open it outside and away from me this time. Didn't go anywhere. I've also bought my flask with me this time on the pretense that it's covered in tape. So if I need to tape anything up, I've got the flask here. And it's got good scotch in it this time. What I've done is I've put some Tamnavorlin in it which happens to be my favourite scotch at the moment. It's a Speyside whisky and it's got a sort of smoky plum flavour to it with a hint of lavender, a little bit of honey in there as well and even some milk chocolate. Really smooth, really tasty, really good Speyside scotch. And of course, if I rip the tent, I've got some duct tape. Right, time to eat my chilli. Oops, okay. That tastes really good. For a chilli from the bag, in fact that's really good. It's warm, it's hot even, and it's quite spicy. Firepot DOV chili. Definitely a good choice. Okay, for dessert, I've got a Wayfarer chocolate pudding. So, definitely not slummy this evening with beer, scotch, chili, and chocolate. Okay, chocolate pudding <coughs> could be a bit of a mess. Just seems to be congealed something or other covered in chocolate sauce that's all over the inside of the bag. Tasty though, definitely chocolatey. There's something special about chocolate in the middle of a field. Good morning. It was a very restful night's sleep, despite the sounds of the wild. A fox paid me a visit during the night, and something I can only think was a badger. Either that, it was a pig snuffling around outside. There was a very loud duck as well, that was quacking away. I don't know whether the fox had got down to see it. Um, also, some pheasants and an owl who was quiet through most of the night but just after dusk and just before dawn it started to, to wooing again well morning again all i was hopeful that i was pitched up in a place where i may see a quite a pleasant sunrise if i swing you round you can see that all i've got is mist 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 and more mist as far as the eye can see I reckon visibility is probably less than 100 metres. At least it means it's stealthy for me. First coffee of the morning. Aeropress Go. Great coffee on the go. I don't know whether that is their sales pitch. If not, it should be. As I mentioned, slept really well this morning. According to my watch, 7 hours and 33 minutes of sleep. That's more than I get at home. Right, it's just after half past seven, all packed up. There's my spot, leave no trace. Now to walk through the mist 
back towards the car. See you soon. Don't know whether you can hear that. It sounds like it's pouring with rain, but it isn't. It's just the dew on the trees condensing and then pouring down through the trees. Out here, it's dry. In there, it sounds like it's raining. It's pretty warm last night, as I knew it was going to be from the forecast. So I only took my two season, really lightweight sleeping bag with me today. And I'm still plenty warm enough all through the night. And the second time of using my Suta Summit comfort light insulated sleeping mat, I'm even more impressed with it. And I was over the moon with it last time. This time I didn't pump it up quite so hard and it was even more luxurious and comfy. Big thumbs up for me for that piece of equipment. The drone I've got is the basic model, the DJI Mini 2. And it doesn't have obstacle avoidance. So I've just been trying to fly the drone in the woods, which is never a good idea if you don't have ob obstacle avoidance. I managed to fly it into my rucksack, into two trees but kept it in the air, and also flew it into a tree and it dropped to the ground and jammed up the gimbal. So I've just had to perform open heart surgery on my drone in the woods. Hopefully now it's going to be okay. This area is apparently somewhat renowned for its lady orchids. I guess though September is probably not the ideal time of the year and I haven't seen any. But then again I have spent most of my trying time trying to dodge the slugs and the dog eggs. Other flowers were present though. Back at St Mary's Church now, almost back to where we started.